So let's talk about the recent Nashville school shooting, which took place at the Covenant School, which is a private school. I don't like to comment immediately after these events, and that's why I didn't. I know I got actually a lot of fans who messaged me, and I do appreciate you trying to send me a topic that you think would be uh, something that I ought to cover. But I don't do it immediately afterwards. I'm not doing this for the views. Like, I realize that's that's the, the sort of idea of, hey, jump on this topic that's that's hot, I guess. Uh, I'm not doing this for the same reasons that so many people do. And I, I want to show respect to those who are actively grieving. And I don't want to add to false information that kind of swirls around the time that the event is still being processed. So for those two reasons, I, I shy away from it for a few days. Uh, and hopefully give the the families at least a, a little bit of time to to begin their grieving process. I just I can't even imagine what they're going through. But in this case, and it does deserve to be covered, three children and three adults were murdered. And it, the attacker, Audrey Hale, was the 28-year-old woman who took their lives. She was transgender, thus trying to be a man. Obviously, she still died a woman because. You can't become a man if you're a woman. But she'd been planning the attack for months. It wasn't a rapid thing. She was slow and methodical planning this out. She had a manifesto. The manifesto has not been released, even still, or yet at least, nor has a motive. LGBT groups don't want it to be released. And, I mean, I can understand why, because they're coming to the very same conclusion that any reasonable person is coming to at this point. It seems very reasonable to presume that because she's trans, and then targeted a private Christian school. You can put two and two together and we kind of figure out most likely what her idea was here. And that was that she wanted to make these these people, including children, into Christian martyrs. And in a society that is increasingly becoming anti-Christian, in which it's increasingly okay to target Christian places, whether that be directly uh, churches or whether that's crisis pregnancy centers. I mean, we have seen these things increasing. We've seen firebombs. I've tried to cover them on this channel whenever possible. It's only a matter of time before you do have Christian martyrs, and it sounds like we, we may have already reached that point, which is just tragic. But I will say that in cases where white supremacy is somehow related or neo-nazism or anything on the on the far right the media rushes to to release that as the motive and to promote that as as the motive in fact so did law enforcement generally it's it's a cohort but not when it's related to one of these preferred victim groups and i kind of wonder if this will be like the vegas concert massacre that never got solved and that was kind of just buried despite the enormous death toll that took place there. Um, we'll see, but I certainly hope not. I, I would think that Nashville law enforcement would be more competent, but then the FBI is involved, so... And we know how they are. So this actually isn't the first massacre or the first school shooting committed by a trans shooter. And that's important because we're being told by those on the left that we shouldn't politicize this by mentioning that the person is trans because trans people never commit acts of violence. And that's just false. We had the, the Colorado Springs Club shooter. We had the Rite Aid shooter in Maryland. We had the Colorado uh, STEM school shooting. And now we have this latest shooting in Nashville. But I mean, disaffected, emotionally troubled people are being pushed toward transgenderism at a time of heightened vulnerability so it makes sense that you'd have these trans people who are disaffected and emotionally troubled committing these acts which are always done by disaffected, emotionally troubled people. You know, these aren't people who are healthy, well-adjusted and come from good families. They're just not. Um, at all. So it, it kind of makes sense that there would be some overlap there. In the uh, aftermath, just immediately afterwards, you had a lot of just kind of sickening responses. So you had the mainstream media trying not to misgender her. In other words, using he, him pronouns for a woman because that's what she said that she wanted to be known by. The fact that that was even a consideration is outrageous. And then you had other, both members of the trans community and also their defenders who were acting like this was in some way a good thing or in some way justifiable. One of those videos I want to bring up and look at with you 
because the logic is so skewed, but it kind of gives us a bit of an insight into the way that they think. And I think that's actually a benefit. So let's take a look. I wonder if the parents of the victims of the Nashville shooting today would still have their children if these trans bills in Tennessee were never a thing. I'm not a parent, but if I were, I'd be real, real mad at the government. I'd be real, real mad at the government. So she's got the crazy eyes, um, but that's a really evil argument. And what it really boils down to, I mean, is if you oppose trans people doing perverted sex acts in front of your kids, then we'll kill your kids. So that's that's essentially what the argument is there. It's a statement of terrorism. You know, we're going to kill your kids if you don't comply with our political aims. Because again, the trans bills that she's talking about are attempts to protect children from the sexually indecent shows that children are being exposed to in the modern age. That's what they are. So her entire threat is, if you don't give us access to your kids to, you know, exploit sexually, then we're going to start killing them in their schools, and that's justifiable morally. That's the claim. It's a shocking and outrageous claim, but it is the claim. And then there were some transgender groups that released their own little statements that we're supposed to find, I don't know, heartwarming, wholesome. Let's take a quick look, okay? I've got this one pulled up for you too. Okay, here we are. And the part that I wanted to show is the fifth paragraph where it says, the second and more complex tragedy, that is after the deaths, is that Aidan or Aubrey Hale, who felt he had no other effective way to be seen than to lash out by taking the life of others and by consequence himself. Um, okay. So, in other words, in order to get attention, this woman had to, in the eyes of the trans resistance network, commit an act of murder against children and random Christians who work at a school and a church. That's, that's the reasoning. And I think it's kind of important just because the entire trans viewpoint seems to be one of attention. And, that's, and I've written about this in an article just recently about someone who had like, I think it was $25,000 worth of surgeries to mutilate himself and disfigure himself. Um, because he wants to be different, wants to look like an alien. It's the same kind of thing. It's just egocentricity taken to such an extreme that we can't even imagine. It's, I'm not your gender. I'm not even, I'm not a she or a her or even a zer. I'm one of the unlimited genders because I'm that special. And that's really the, the sort of mindset that we're talking about here. It's, it's show me attention or... I'll lash out in some way, in a very, I mean, it's, it's a very juvenile mindset. It's impossible to see it as anything else. And then if we just continue for just a little bit longer, at the same document, we see it says, the, in the last big paragraph, it says, we remind the news media to respect the self-identified pronouns of transgender individuals who come across your desk. Aidan Hale self-identified with he, him pronouns on forward-facing sites. We also urge you to avoid pandering to those individuals on the right who will use this double tragedy to torment, to, to torment fear and terror of transgender people in order to advance a political agenda of transgender elimination. Okay. <laughs> so in other words, once again, what we have is don't cover the story accurately. Don't act like there's a connection between uh, this woman being trans when we don't... I mean... <laughs> The truth is what should be our goal, right? In coverage of these events, the truth should be our goal. It's, it's what matters, not the political viewpoint. Whereas this argument is basically, no, the political viewpoint matters. You have to protect people from the truth because they might not respond well if they had access to the truth. That's the argument. It reminds me of after 9-11, those calls to, you know, be especially sensitive to Muslims. It's like, well, can we can we prioritize the victims instead of of this? And it wouldn't be, you know, a bad idea to look at the religion that caused them to uh, 
to engage in such an act. Similarly, as we look here, if there's a certain ideology which causes something to be more likely, then you'd want to look at it. Kind of a similar thing there. But I will say this, transgender people, transgenderism, it kills people whether it does so with bullets or not. Because it's an ideology or a way of thinking that is about self-erasure, about self-denial. It's sort of nihilistic in a sense, but it's about the person ceasing to exist as they were made, right? They're, they're trying to erase themselves and they do that in order to get attention because they can't get attention in the way that they were actually made. And th there's something really tragic about that, especially when you see it manifest in, in children, when you see a child who's doing the transgender thing because he doesn't feel like he has value or worth or recognition. And our very secular society sort of teaches that, that these people just basically don't matter, uh, that you are just matter and that's it. And as opposed to like a Christian society that would teach them that no, each individual human life has, has value and worth. But you know, with our society now that pushes everything from abortion to euthanasia, we send the message that human life by itself doesn't have real value, that it's, you know, it, it, it's something very contrary. Uh, to what is true, that each individual is completely unique and irreplaceable. And so I think it, it, all these different things just kind of tie together, but it, it's an absolute tragedy, so please do um, pray for all those affected. Hey, you're still here! Don't forget to give the video a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and share it with your friends. I've also got links in the description as to how you can help support my work. Thank you so much!